12 to 18 inches back and having it shine more upright, you're going to really uh, bring out the subtleties in that brickwork as well as get light up to that second story uh, and really create a nice, um, a nice house lighting effect. So that's what I would do on that section there. I would do the same thing over here where I would kind of have like four of those on both sides of the window that light that. Um, the nice thing is you do get some reflective light. It kind of makes the silhouette of these kind of pop and then I'll give you some ideas for the front as well. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Terrence, thanks again uh, for your email and for your pictures. Uh, yeah, I'll give you a couple really nice ideas. I think you've got a, a great little house here for uh, landscape lighting. So what I would do, and if you've watched any of the videos, um, you know I, I talk a lot about lighting the front facade, especially when you have nice brickwork and, and stuff like this, and you have a beautiful landscape that we can highlight as well too. But I'll start with the kind of the front facade and the brick. Um, really all I'm doing is I'm just using a standard uplight uh, like this. It's the most uh, cost effective way of doing that. And what we do with that is basically I would have it just kind of underneath the shutters close to the house. And that's the biggest mistake most people make when they're doing landscape lighting is they'll put those lights like back here and try and shine them at the house. And what it does, it creates a very flat light uh, and it doesn't bring out the subtleties in the brick. Where is if you can get it closer to the house, call it, 12 to 18 inches back and having it shine more upright, you're gonna really uh, bring out the subtleties in that brickwork as well as get light up to that second story uh, and really create a nice, um, a nice house lighting effect. So that's what I would do on that section there. I would do the same thing over here where I would kind of have like four of those on both sides of the window that light that. Um, the nice thing is you do get some reflective light. It kind of makes the silhouette of these kind of pop and then I'll give you some ideas for the front as well. Um, I would probably use one of those same up lights just on this tree here just to kind of round out this corner. Again, same thing. You don't need to bring it super far back and try and shine it at the canopy. This one you might bring back a little further so you can catch a little bit more of the canopy, but you still want it shining more upright than you think. And again, that's just the biggest uh, mistake that I see most people do is they'll try and bring it back here and shine it at the tree. And really you're trying to highlight the whole tree by, by shining it more upright. So I would do that. Um, and then something else I really like doing, especially when you have a nice front porch like this, is I kind of like lighting these um, front columns. Uh, the reason I like doing that same kind of same light, same kind of style, but getting it fairly close and having it shine upright is because it really makes these stand out. Plus that light kind of hits the top here and it almost creates like a soffit lighting look, um, but a very subtle one. So it makes this whole front porch area very inviting. Uh, as well as, again, you get some reflective light back down low. So I would probably have like three of those, one here, one here, and then just kind of one in the corner that even if it highlights the wall a little bit, just to kind of balance that section out. Um, something else I would do if you're up for it is I'd probably look at trying to light this second story peak, I think would look really good. Uh, the way we do that is just with these gutter mounts, um, it's this little bracket that fits in the gutter and you screw your light into that. Um, you can run Typically what we'll do is we'll just run the wire either up or behind uh, the downspout across the gutter, mount it there, and then again have that up light just shining more upright than into the window because if you have it shining too low, you're going to be lighting more of the roof than the peak, whereas you really want that shining kind of upright just to highlight this section here. So that's what I would start with. And then depending how much room you have here, there's... There's two trains of thought. What more uh, more people will do, and I think it would work actually really nice over here, is just with some path and garden lights. Um, so just using some of these guys. But I like to kind of space them out in between where I have my accent lights. So for example, I have an up light here and an up light here. I'm probably going to throw a path and garden light here, maybe one in between the window, kind of one in the middle here, another one in between the window, and then maybe another one or two over here. And then it'll do a nice job of lighting the walkway, but you're also going to be splashing some light back into the beds a little bit that kind of help um, highlight some of this stuff. Um, what I would do on this side, because this is a little bit thicker, and again, I don't know how much room you have, but I might try and put like a wash light, so something like this. Um, very similar to an uplight, but it's a softer, subtler, wider angle light. 
And if you can get that kind of in between again, where you have your accent lights on the back, but you have your wash light kind of in front here, and you're just highlighting this front bush, it just gives you different uh, lighting levels and heights, as well as different depths, because you have some stuff lit up front, you have some stuff lit in the back, you have some stuff lit down low, you have some stuff lit up high, and it just creates a really nice balance. So um, Terrence, we can definitely customize the kit for you, or you can kind of take those suggestions. You can just kind of go and uh, add some of these different lights to your shopping cart. A transformer and wiring kit like this would be perfect for a job of that size. You get 250 feet of wire, um, 150 watt transformer, which would easily handle those lights, all your waterproof connections. Uh, the only thing you might need to add is if you wanted to do the second story um, gutter lighting there, you might need to just add one of those to your, to your package, which again, you can find those on the website. But again, if you have any questions, let me know and be happy to help. So uh, here we are on our project at Salt Springs. So um, the first thing I've done, like I always say, is I've just kind of gone and I've laid out all my lights because I want to make sure I have the appropriate amount of lights. And then from there, I can calculate how many watts I need and make sure I've got my proper um, transformer sized and everything. And although I've already kind of done those calculations first, it's always a good idea just to double check. Um, from there, as you can see, I've just laid out all my wire on the ground. I'm running everything from my last light way over there um, and off to my next light. Again, that way I know how much wire I need. I kind of know my running path. And a general rule of thumb too is you always just want to make your life as simple as possible um, with LED. For this one, we even have like, um, we probably got about 350 feet of cable going out. Uh, this is a huge acreage, it's about seven acres. I'll give you guys a idea of that later. Um, but even with that and the amount of lights and everything, voltage drop is just not something I'm really concerned about. With this one, again, because we're using a good quality light, um, we're using large enough wire, we're not trying to save dollars using a smaller wire, which I'd always recommend go with at least 12 to low voltage uh, direct burial wire, or um, it's just, it's the easiest to work with and you go with something smaller, you might save a couple bucks, but then you're really limiting the capacity of, of what you can add on. So that's pretty much it. And then um, we're doing a lot of uh, up lighting and down lighting on this, on this project. And um, this is kind of like our staple fixture that we use for a lot of our jobs, the RS um, up light. Uh, the reason I like it for so many reasons um, and why it works good for this is um, it comes with a really durable ground stake, which you don't always find with a lot of the lights and stuff you find on Amazon and Home Depot. It's a pretty cheap one and it breaks real easy. These stakes won't break. The light is, uh, is going to get hit by a tractor, it might get knocked out of the threads, but these will not break and you can usually just screw them back in. So I like that. I like to have a, a 10 foot lead wire. So this is great when we're mounting them in trees and stuff because um, it just it gives me a lot of room to play around. If I come back at night and I want to move it, I can move it you know, within 10 feet either way and I don't have to remake connections. So I, I love that. Um, the wire is really easy to work with, cheaper models. Um, I know because sometimes we use different lights for different things. It's just, it's not as easy to work with. All this stuff adds up, which makes a, a quality light. If something's really cheap, there's generally a reason for that. So um, the other reason I like it is if you've had a chance to work with it or have tried or try it before you buy it light, you'll know um, this is an aluminum fixture, but this does not feel like most aluminum fixtures that you find on Amazon and Home Depot. Um, get our try before you buy it light. You can see how durable this thing is. Um, it's literally bulletproof. I've been installing these in trees before and I've dropped these from 25 feet and this thing does not break. Um, so uh, a really good light. And then the other reason I like it, especially for a lot of do-it-yourselfers, and I get flack from, uh, from professional lighting designers all the time saying, oh, integrated, integrated, integrated is the way to go. I, personally, I still like this. I like getting a good quality fixture and I like getting a good quality bulb. Again, you get um, you get some of the cheaper stuff you find online and you're gonna have problems with the bulb. They just don't last as long. They draw more power than they say. So that's where people run into voltage drops. And I get that email, uh, I don't know how many times a week. Hey, I bought this system. I won't say the name uh, from a big box store and I hooked up all my lights. I've got 20 lights and they just, they won't come on. And it's because um, the lights are drawing a lot more power than the box actually says and that's just based on efficiency and quality and all that kind of stuff and they can't get their system to go so I mean if you're doing a very small system that's fine but if you're getting upwards of 15 20 lights plus and you're still going with some of those cheaper models there's a good chance you're gonna have some problems um, not so much with this um, the other reason I like it is the components are really easy I'll talk about some troubleshooting stuff 
uh, later that uh, really allows you to play around and troubleshoot with this. And the other thing I like too is on this property, so we've got some trees that are, I, I don't know, I'm looking at them here, I say they're 80 to 100 feet high. So I wanna be able to put something in that's bright enough. And I like the ability that if I put something in and it's either too bright or not bright, enough I can just go and I can switch out a bulb I don't have to change the fixture I don't have to mess around with trying to change an LED board I can just basically pop in a new bulb um, try something a little bit brighter and see how that looks so um, that's one of the reasons I really really like these ones um, it just gives you a whole bunch of flexibility I know a lot of people ask about beam spreads and and intensities and all that kind of stuff well this really allows you to play around with that because even as your landscape grows as trees get bigger and stuff you might want to upgrade how bright some of your bulbs are um, really good option again uh, nice waterproof seal that's another thing that just makes fixtures last I mean there's so many reasons and you know we're on a on an island here that gets a lot of rain in the winter time so I want to make sure we got something that's super waterproof that's why we're using our waterproof connections and everything but um, really wanted to give you a feel for why we're using uh, these lights on this project and with so many they're by far our most popular one um, so yeah we'll we'll kind of keep going with the install here uh, we're just gonna get our stakes um, in the ground that is the one thing uh, I did another video whether it's gonna be part of this one or not where we did some deck uh, lighting where your rubber mallet is really uh, is your best friend it comes in all our kits um, for a reason because we use it a ton and that's usually what I use when I'm securing, uh, especially here, because we're on an island, this is rock, so I need to really be able, I need to really be able to get that into the ground. There's no way I'm doing that if I just gotta step on it. So you'll use this for so many different reasons. Um, when we're mounting some tree lights too, I'll show you some ways that we do that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, we'll move on with it. We'll screw our light in. We'll make our wiring connections. Um, a nice thing too, or, or little trick is, um, always try and keep the adjustment screw. Another reason I like this light, there's a little adjustment screw at the base, so you can come and you can just kinda uh, adjust it to go more upright or down if you want to. Um, and it's a really durable one. It's not some cheap little screw thing that some of the lights, again, have online. Um, and then uh, the last thing I was gonna mention, um, I totally forgot my train of thought, but, uh, but the adjustment, oh yeah, and that's what it was, is a general rule of thumb, whenever you're installing up lights, you almost always wanna have them more upright than you actually think. I see so many people angle them at the objects, um, and you typically get a lot better effect if you're angling it more upright um, than you think. So that's just a good general rule of thumb, but regardless, come back at night, make any adjustments, make sure you're getting the right effect, even on a property this side, even with how many lights like these we've installed, I'm still coming back at night and I wanna make sure that I'm getting the effect that I look for um, with the design and everything that we've come up with. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.